We're continuing on the drive to the road to the finish line. This time with a little detour with the Fast and the Furious version of the Incredible Hulk. The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift on our journey through Chris's first time watch of the entire Fast and Furious saga. I am Dom the Movie Nerd. I am Chris, the TV nerd. Like Dom said, this is going to be my first time watching the movie Tokyo Drift. As the kids say, I'm all gassed up for this one. So The car puns are ready to roll, and we are as well. Stay tuned. Round three, or within chronological order, round six. So, and, and like I said, you'll understand once we actually get to it, because again, the chronology okay. of these movies is, is is such a source of mystery that only the people within the fast cult know of. So, hey, what, what, yeah, what are your thoughts going into this before we actually get started with it? First of all, I have no idea why you would say six when we're on the third movie. That just, again, to me right again, now... Again, <laughs> all, in due time is all that I have to say. Yeah. In due time. It just sounds stupid to me right now, but hey, like I said, this is my indoctrination into the cult. They're yep. going to make an HBO documentary about me getting just <laughs> consumed by this cult by the time this whole thing's done. I'm sure of it. So my, my thoughts going into it, man, I've been really enjoying these so far. Just to re recap, if you guys are just joining us, go and watch our first two recaps. Like I said, I'm doing the whole series front to back, going in fully blind. Loved the first one. The second one was really good, but it was definitely a slight step behind for obvious reasons. No Vince, none of that stuff. So you, mean, you, it, you would say the second one stepped on the brakes a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. <laughs> But I would also say, like, we're still steady cruise control, just, like, coasting down the highway with the top down. I'm yep. feeling great so oh, far. So. It, it's only going to get even better. because the only, So the only thing that I have to say about this going into this movie, but the rest I'll say for the actual first-time watch, is that, is that, look, every franchise has got that one little kind of, like, bastard. The same way that every family has the one cousin, that one uncle, that they're like, ah, eh, we don't really like this guy, but we kind of have to have him around because he's family, you know? And that's <laughs> quite literally the definition of this movie because it's exactly the same thing as what happened in The Incredible Hulk, where The Incredible Hulk came out at a certain time period when Marvel was making movies a certain type of way, and the right situation for the Hulk character or so a mess but by default it was an mcu movie even though by all rights that movie has pretty much been ignored both stylistically and within the chronology of the movie and that's kind of the same thing with this movie where this movie for all intents and purposes the franchise tried to ignore at least until it couldn't and you'll understand part of that today but the rest you'll understand once we get into the rest of the franchise after this movie and that's all i'm going to say about that right now so without further ado chris are you ready to begin our watch for part three or as or in chronological order, part six of the Fast and the Furious saga, subtitled Tokyo Drift. Yeah, man, I'd say to our viewers, buckle in, because it's about to be a bumpy ride. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. Old school universal logo. I miss that. I was going to say, how Just... long has it been since we've had this, man? Oh, I miss it. I miss it. This movie's directed by Justin Lin, who has become the longest known director of this franchise, directed some of the biggest and most successful ones. He's on Boswell. Who, again, would not come back in the franchise until a quick cameo in F7. <laughs> high schoolers talking about cars. Who clearly don't look like high schoolers. Yep. Apparently, I heard there's going to be dinosaurs in some of the later ones. I'm hoping. This. And they always live to tell the tale. I mean, thank God. Always. But like, Every time. Before his 40th birthday. His hairline's receding, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice little establishing shots, like it's really cool oh, just yeah. to get the Tokyo landscape going on. Like I said, with the exception of its lead actor and performance, this is a really good movie. Roughly 26 when this movie came out. But he looks like he's 30. Ah, uh, Lil Bow Wow. Wow, <laughs> that's throwing it back. That really is. Foot? Or is that supposed to be like a, like an animal imprint? It's kind of crazy. I, I love the use of a rapper in every film so far. <laughs> three right? for three, man. That's badass. <laughs> But this already looks like visually and aesthetically like way better than the first two. Once more, thinly veiled metaphors. Hot! Another franchise staple. The good guy and the bad guy getting as close to each other as humanly possible. Oh my god, we actually have a race announcer who's a male. Oh, there they are. That I said corrected. There was, there was the wink to the camera. That was just him making a choice as an actor. Of how all these cars can just sustain so much damage. Right. It's like I, I lightly tap something by accident and my car's totaled. Not yep. these cars. The one guy just jumps on top of his car. That extra was totally like, I'm going to be the first one on this car. Uh-oh, I hope my dad doesn't, you know, have a hint that Ooh. I was out racing. Oh, well, he's waiting Here. up oh, in this tiny and ass. I also love, too, because this only ever happens in movies. It, how they can just park in, like, the middle of the street 
and just stop <laughs> and there's no one around them. I'm like, broken iPod. That's the other thing that dates this movie. An iPod. This is like a maiden call. This is the best Fast and Furious movie? They're like, yeah, that's right. Get, get the goon squad out of here. The real gangsters are here. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's both look while we're driving at high speeds. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, that's some Godzilla 2000 type shot. Uh-oh. What's the only way to solve anything in this goddamn franchise? A race. Like, what else? Nice Ooh. cinematography there. Right? Nice, dude. I even for a CG, Even for a CG camera shot, that was dope. Yeah, I felt... And now, see, funny how you were mentioning an almost Batman-esque Justice League-like cameo. Yeah. Hey, I felt it. I felt oh, it. I really yeah. did. yeah. That was Tokyo Drift. Dude. Oh, man. So good. Dude, that movie was fucking awesome. Like, we could just Look, they even had to put one of these at the end. Dude, they, That's how you know it's good, bro. That movie, this movie kicked so much ass. Like, so much ass. Oh, my God. This movie... Oh, man. Like, even as far as, like, the spinoff that the franchise forgets, like, this movie was fucking awesome. Oh, my God. Like, the stunts... Like, the, like I said, this movie, to me mixes all the best elements of both sects of the franchise, right? You've got, like, the first two movies that are kind of, like, grounded, even though those movies are, like, more cartoonish in some mm -hmm. aspects than some of the future movies that came out. And then you've got, like, kind of the the sleeker look of the newer movies, right, that would come out. And this movie, like, is, like, the meaning of both worlds. Uh, I feel like that this type of perfect, like, mixing of the world is only replicated one more time in Fast Five. And the problem is, after Fast Five, that's when the stunts in the movie and, like, just the pure ridiculousness starts to overpower, like, the logistics of the plot. But here, it all meets in the middle in order to create for a grounded, surprisingly engaging adventure that even though the protagonist, I'll say, is a little bit flat, and sure, we've seen this type of story before, like, it all works. And, like, this movie actually, like, it just works, you know? Totally, totally, dude. This is the the honestly the most grounded of the three films I've seen so far. It's so rooted in reality that it makes it all the more intense and suspenseful. And and you know, I think it's a testament to some of the director's um, ability as well with the way he really establishes the city and you really feel the environment. You know, it feels very lived in, especially in that ending sequence, man. Like, I really was taken back when that whole you know. They're, they're going around that turn and the camera doesn't follow the cars. We see the depth of what they're really fighting against right now, which is a drop that will end their lives. And you feel those moments in this movie. Like I, I did feel those in the first one for sure. They, they did a great job with that first movie. And the second one wasn't terrible. It was actually really enjoyable. Like I've so far really liked every single one of the three installments I've seen, but I don't want to be that hipster guy, but like, there was something really special about this one because I think it's one of those perfect stars align where the filmmaking meets the ridiculousness. But I think you're right. It's not too ridiculous yet where someone like me who's turned off by that stuff really just tunes out and is just like, oh, God, I have to sit through this. No, I was locked in, man. Like, I, I really was into it. The characters were great. It did not matter that we didn't get any Paul Walker in this one. It, that didn't matter at all. It was just a great film like this film stands on its own it really and, does and like i said literally as you can see not only is this kind of the movie that loki sets the tone for the rest of the franchise as seen with justin lynn this movie was the thing that got vin diesel back vin diesel came back to cameo in this movie and then the next movie he's back and the franchise is like off to the start because even though because fast and furious which is the next movie that we're going to cover right is is chronologically the next movie that takes place after too fast too furious as as you'll see as we get later on that line that the chronology of these movies is a little kind of eh especially because even though this movie is freaking awesome it is very much of its time and so there are certain points chronologically wise that come up when this movie rears its ugly head later on that don't quite make sense but all that being said, it all still works out as far as that goes. Like, Vin Diesel coming back in order to lay the groundwork for the next couple yeah. of movies. I think it works out perfectly. And all I'm going to say is that, all joking aside, like I'm honestly really, really excited for like the next stage of the journey and that we're about to go on. Same, man. If, if, I, if I was hesitant at all, which I completely wasn't, but, but if there was even the slightest bit of like, what did I sign up for? Because like this is a lot of movies, a lot of free time, right? No. It's, it's gone after yeah. watching this one. I mean, they did so much of it so cinematically too if if you i can i think i can lend that word to this movie because these character dynamics you know the way that these people who were all just meeting for the first time in this hour and 40 minute runtime which really isn't that long they just sort of come together they coalesce everyone's 
line matters. Everyone's contribution to the film has a purpose. And so you really kind of get into this gang. And it's something I've noticed with like more recent sort of action films that aren't ensemble, but do follow a central character who really relies on the ensemble around him to accent the movie. Like, for example, the new Star Wars trilogy. I feel like I walked out of that thing only really knowing Ray, a little bit of Finn. And I like who's Poe? He seems cool. Oscar Isaac's a great actor, but you wouldn't know that if you saw those movies. It's like we lost the ability to create the world and flesh out the environment and and the and the scenario and the people that our leads interact with. And if if there's anything this movie serves as, I think it's really a lesson to action storytelling. And okay, we still had good action storytelling in 2006. Check. Like, where did it go wrong? We're getting closer. I, I, my, my, you know, my inclination is to say maybe not in this series, but we're getting closer to the timeline where we lose that. But just like the, his father and him, they could have easily forgotten about that. Most movies nowadays, once he left the house, you would never see the father again. Yep. But for the for that moment to come back, man, where that conversation they had actually mattered, and not to do it in a cheap, hey, we have to have this moment here, but like he holds, like he shows up with the gun, like he's there for his son. I don't know. I don't. We went wrong somewhere, and we're really unpacking well, that this year on the I'm podcast. All I'm gonna say, all I'm gonna say to add to that is the timeline of action movies. Again, it goes very well because again, this is one of the longest running action franchises. The movie that's about to come out is the ninth movie of the core Fast and Furious movies. Of all the movies that have been released in the series, it'll be the tenth one. And this franchise is hitting its 20 year anniversary this year. That is a long time that this action franchise has been around. It's a, like sure the Mission Impossible franchise has been around longer, but there haven't been as many movies. And the problem is those. Those movies have all been so gradually revolved around Tom Cruise, right? Like, we always associate Vin Diesel with this action franchise, but the franchise has grown so much bigger than Vin Diesel now, right? Obviously, you have the inclusion of The Rock that came in, obviously Paul Walker within the earlier days, and now you have like, some of the other core members of the ensemble that have become more well-known, Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, Gal Gadot, people, like, even Han, even Han is a franchise staple at a certain point, so much so that, well, again, it's not a spoiler because it's literally in all the trailers, he's back in this movie. In this new movie, the ninth one, and again, it, it's not. Yeah, the last I made time. the thumbnails. I yeah. saw him. Yeah, you, you, you know, you know, <laughs> it's not a spoiler. Everyone has seen the, both those trailers. They know that he's back, right? I saw it in the first trailer, and I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" But you know what? I missed Han so much. Han is a franchise staple, and you'll understand in the later movies. So, with that being said, dude, star ratings. Yeah, man, star ratings. Let's do it. Uh, what an enjoyable movie. I'm really glad that. And I can't wait to see how they sort of manage to loop this one back in because this movie has a goddamn charm. And while it's not perfect, and while there are clearly some things that I'm glad we've left behind in regards to just social norms we've thankfully phased out of, it's it's still going to be a fairly high score for this franchise, which is really ranking high on my list. I got to go 4.5 out of 5. I mean, yeah. the first one, I'm still standing by that 5 out of 5. I really felt it. I really believed that. It was so good. It was like the perfect entrance to these films. Like for me personally, man, like that that's an action movie. You know, it's it's a different kind of five out of five than a Goodfellas, of course. But that's an action movie five out of five. And this one comes damn close. Yeah. Really good. Really yeah. close. Honestly, the, the real weakness is is just and you get used to it. But our lead's performance at first is a little rough. That's yeah. really one of the biggest oh. and only hindrances. Yeah, the only thing that I'll say to this is, I can't believe I'm saying this, but out of the first three movies as far as the rewatch, for like the most inconsistent part of this entire franchise, this is the one that I enjoy the most, honestly, on the rewatch. The first one, I like, it's good, but the point break elements kind of really do rear their ugly head, and the overacting is just too much for me to handle at certain points. And the second one, entertaining is that one, is that one like literally just took all the wrong lessons from the first one and just took the residual goofiness and upped it to 11. Like that scrambled the end, the fucking ejector seats, that movie was literally a cartoon this movie again it takes all the elements from the first two movies and all the awesome elements that i would go on to love about the rest of this franchise and mixes them all in this one perfect little package even though you're right the lead's performance isn't the best it has enough of a grounded hero story and the rest of the world is so fleshed out and so enjoyable this movie's fucking awesome four and a half out of five stars this is my favorite one so far of the rewatch yeah and this didn't have any overacting issues as far None. as i'm concerned none at all like i said 
as we keep saying after the first rank, again, we're, we're more so in the middle of the journey now, you know? Next one we got is Fast and Furious, which again is, I like Fast and Furious, it's good, but to me, especially after seeing what comes after, it, it is only a precursor to Fast Five, which still to me is the absolute apex of the franchise. But with that being said, people, what did you guys think of our of our first time, of Chris's first time watching, my second time watching the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift? Let us know what your thoughts are on below. What do you guys think of our stage of the journey, of the Fast journey overall? Let us all know all of that in the comment section below. Be sure to click leave this video a like. Be sure to leave this video, click the subscribe button. Be sure to click the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you guys can get notified every time we put up new content. Overall, Chris, where can the good people find you on the social medias? Yeah, yeah. You guys can find me at Christian Ivanko. Anywhere that matters, I'm all over them dang social medias that rule our lives. Uh, it's Christian Ivanko, E-V-A-N-K-O. I make music, which you can find through the links in my bio. I happen to think it's pretty good. I think you might like it too. I also have another podcast called Talkin', spelled the same way we spell Talkin' right here on this show, Talkin' with Andrew and Chris, a show about life, music, and everything in between. We recently interviewed a Hungarian synthwave artist named Quixotic. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. You might maybe see quixotic on this channel at some point in time so yeah that, that's what i do dom what about you man where can they find you yes uh i don't have any sarcastic posts to say for my personal pages but you can follow me on facebook and instagram at movie nerd reviews and of course on this page on our social medias at talking tv at talking tv podcast on facebook and instagram where we post all the latest news updates today i just posted actually the official selections that me and my esteemed oscars panel last night uh or at least last night as of the time of this recording made for our best of best picture nominees by the time that this video goes up the oscars will have been announced and we will have a winner most likely it will be nomadland but that draft was a ton of fun and if you guys get a chance you should absolutely check it out again we'll have had so much content out for you guys by the time this comes out again we've had two whole disney recap series that have happened within this year both with wandavision and with falcon and winter soldier we've got the variety show that we're doing we've got podcasts every week we've got more top 10 lists we've got so much content that we've got coming out for you guys and it can all be found here on the talking tv channel like i said we're here for you guys and we're not going to stop until it's over quarter mile at a time that's how we do this and again it shows you just again how like into this movie we were considering the overall lack of car puns that we made so with that being said people once again thank you guys for tuning in be sure to tune in next week for the next installment fast and furious the fourth movie 12 seasons in a short film and we'll see you guys next week.